Hey friends, how are you? Um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever it is that you celebrate. Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, um, Happy Solstice. It was really a great holiday. We celebrate Christmas, we had a great time. It was really quiet, peaceful. Um, just a really nice contemplative Christmas, which of course it's really not for everybody because my kids are home and there were lots of really wonderful gifts and it was good to see my daughter back from college. It was so good to see her. She's doing, she is just at the best school she could possibly be for her. You know, just a word to any of you, any mothers out there who are facing the college, um, process it was a big deal last year it was a really big deal and um, finding the right school for your child is the, is really important it's not about the best school necessarily it's about the um, of course you want them to get into the best school that they can but to find the right school and so she really I have to say she followed her intuition and she knew the school that was great for her and she has just been doing she's been thriving and really doing amazingly well and she's so happy and it's so good to see her happy and um, it's good to have her home of course good to have her home it's good to I never feel better than when all my children are under the same roof um, it just makes me so happy so really happy to have everybody home but today is the first time that I have uh, just a minute to myself you know just a little time to myself and um, you know, I'm so happy to be in here. I wanted to share with you, of course, here's the Carlina pullover, which I've been working on forever, it seems. I love the colors. I love how this turned out. I just love, I love a short sleeve sweater. This is genius. It's so great because you can put underneath it, um, you know, a light black or whatever color the main color is, and you ha kind of have the look of a long sleeve sweater. Um, I mean, I live in Vermont, so it's often very cold, and I find it still extremely warm to have this kind of, you know, sweater on. Um, you know, but it also, I love having my arms free, like on a day like today where it's about 35, 40 degrees. It's really nice to just, because I have the fire going, and it's just really nice to have my arms free when I'm knitting. Um, it just feels a little less bulky although this yarn um, is extremely light and extremely warm um, is it wool folk I think it's wool folk uh, light the fingering weight and I've gone over there's another I use these are the same yarns that I use for the Birkin if you look at my Birkin um, I had to rip the Birkin back it wasn't working out for me that I didn't I had trouble with that um, and I ended up using the same exact color. So I talk about those colors in that video. Um, but it's just, it's a really nice, it's a really light, uh, fine yarn. And I do like that. I like that feel. Um, I like that effect. Um, I don't like bulky sweaters necessarily. Um, although <laughs> never say never, cause I'm also knitting something in a bulkier yarn. Um, but I do love it. I love the colors. I get so many compliments on this sweater. People, you know, people just comment on it because it's just so, I like the large motif. I think I've never done something with a large motif. I love the red large leaf motif. It just, and you can hear my, my fireplace makes a little bit of a strange sound. Um, I love it. You know, I am a little bit, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm, I follow a little bit the Kibbe body type uh, system, which is kind of just a way of dressing as opposed to like looking at yourself and like, okay, I'm a pear shape, I'm a banana, I'm a whatever, I'm an apple. This takes into consideration your entire appearance. And instead of saying like, you know, you're this, you need to, you need to disguise your hips or you need to do this. Um, to make yourself look more, you know, perfect as a woman or whatever, right? This kind of takes in your entire appearance and says you have, you know, it's a balance of yin and yang. And it's, um, it's really interesting. It's, it, it just kind of like, you know, you're a certain, you're a type, you, you project a certain kind of image. And uh, so there are things that you need to do to kind of play up 
I'm gonna have to, I'm so, I apologize for this. I don't know why this is doing it. We had someone come and look at the, um, I have a wood burning stove and it just vibrates like this, but it stops. So I'm just gonna hope it stops. Um, you project a certain, you have, you, it's about your lines, dramatic, you have like, you, you know, angular versus soft and uh, you play up what you already are. And um, anyway, so this is more of a dramatic sweater the large motifs are more dramatic and um, I think that's I, it, those small those larger motifs fit me better let me see if I can do something hold on okay hopefully that will stop it I apologize so anyway, so this sweater, I just, I do love it. I think it has a dramatic feel. I like the large motifs. I like the interplay of the red with the light blue and the green and uh, the dark gray background. I just feel like it's a very uh, pretty um, dramatic sweater. So that has been super fun knitting that. It took me, uh, I finished it about a month ago, but I just haven't had time to come in. And I wanted to just kind of start with a little bit of a, some quotes that I, uh, two quotes that I found really beautiful and lovely to think about at this time of year. The first is a quote by an unknown person, um, but it could be said by so many, so many spiritual leaders. And it says, the way we alchemize a soulless world into a sacred world is by treating everyone as if they are sacred until the sacred and them remembers. I just think that's a really beautiful uh, thing to consider right now. And then I'm, one of the books I'm reading right now is um, this book by Robert Thurman. Robert Thurman is a great Buddhist scholar. He has um, he he taught at Columbia University for many years. His daughter is Uma Thurman. Most people that's how he's most known. Um, but he is a great. He's a good friend of the Dalai Lama. He has he's a Tibetan. He speaks uh, fluent Tibetan, and he's just a really uh, I love. He's a great teacher. He's a great teacher and a great um, beautiful person. Anyway, this is a book. It's an old book. I just I was out you know book shopping with my daughter and uh, we were up in we were in uh, Burlington and I found this this bookshop book the crow bookshop and I found some really great I'll show you some books that I found but I wanted to just read this to you as well uh, he's talking about his journey and he's talking about his awareness as a young man and and this restlessness that he felt throughout his life that he had achieved a certain amount of success but he still had this restlessness and he said, preoccupation with myself was the core problem. The center of the malfunction of my the center of the malfunction in my mechanism that prevented me from enjoying life as much as I felt I could, from being good to others as I wanted to be, from understanding all I wanted to. I began to see meaning in reorienting my reorienting my life toward freeing myself from quote unquote me. And um, I really like that quote because I, for me, that is the core, uh, the core, the central tenet of what, why I practice, why I actually knit. Although I have to be careful with knitting because knit, knitting does, because there's an attachment to the object and there's a, there's a whole thing about wearing a garment and looking a certain way that kind of feeds into this idea of me. Um, but you know this it when I'm knitting I'm not and I've shared this before with with others this is kind of what we like what I like to talk about in here is how knitting moves us from a preoccupation with ourself and our problems our you know this uh, this small s self the person in the world who gets what she wants who doesn't get what she wants who who feels that you know others may take from her right who feels that um, who feels threatened by others who feels frightened and uh, vulnerable right all of these things that we all feel um, which are true in a subjective reality but we don't only identify with our subjective selves there is a larger self that is free of all of that which is threatened by no one who never who who was never born who never dies who is um, infinite and um, 
and that's and knitting <laughs> kind of soothes my mind into a musical pattern of not thinking of thinking of the stitches and the pattern that I'm making um, and it pulls me I'm not thinking about myself and my problems and obsessing and perseverating and doing all the things that all of us do as human beings do you know we just do this this is what it is to be human um, it's a it's a it's not a practice but it's like a practice and it also moves me into that creative space so it's that balance of finding something that is a cre that's creatively inspiring um you know like this sweater when i saw the pattern it was just like so inspired to do it i just thought it looked so beautiful and then i was like what colors could i do it in um and that that keeps me out of a mindset of depression anxiety worry you know all of that so um so i thought that was really interesting and i um i found i'm going to talk about what i'm currently knitting in a second um i also listened to something really interestingly i listened to um you know this is a contemplative time of year we think about as the new year comes on us we think about the year past and this past year was really to say that it was transformative for my family is really an understatement because um, I can't think of how I mean I can tell you what happened I can tell you the many things that happened uh, in March we bought this house really just on a whim it was our uh, you know I'm someone who feels if something feels right and we have we had been thinking about leaving uh, where we were living kind of moving into a different kind of lifestyle um, we lived in a metropolis uh, uh, you know a, a crowded uh, area out adjacent to New York City and we had you know we had a good life we were busy I had a really good job my husband had a you know we were we were we had good jobs we were making a living but it was so um, we were just really kind of running and living to make ends meet that's how it felt and um, you know and then with COVID and everything with all the changes that happened we just you know kind of said what about Manchester Vermont you know and um, and then found this house made an offer and everything just tick 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 fell into place and it was like it was like I didn't have to do anything it just fell into place and everything it was just from every financial transaction to um, the actual move to transferring jobs to finding work to you know enrolling our kids in school all the things that had to fall into place everything just fell into place like so perfectly so for me that just felt like this is you know this was meant to be this was part of my desk this was part of our destiny and um, so there was that there was that big the big move happened in March um, I started working uh, as a teacher again for the first time in 20 years I've been working as a tutor and I've been hi privately hired and and I've been working consistently um, but I hadn't actually been in the classroom I've been working as a private tutor and I was very busy in Long Island doing that um, but now I'm working as a, a you know a teacher again and and that is just really I really do enjoy that it's really really wonderful and um, my husband got it my husband works in you know in retail and he he got a nice promotion just recently so that happened um, you know that was something that you know wasn't happening it didn't happen for him in Long Island but it was able we were able, it was able to happen up here just kind of and this is kind of like this when you listen when you connect with your inner voice and you heed the call of your inner voice and you respond and you take risk it does seem that life responds to you and that's not to say that we should just willy-nilly make major decisions you know on a whim but it does seem that when we heed the call and we kind of really focus and I look back on my life of the last you know I just last night spent a lot of time organizing papers and I spent so much time I see now planning for this move without realizing that I was planning for the move and um, it's just a really it was a, it's an interesting process and our daughter got accepted to the school of her dreams and she got a wonderful scholarship and 
Um, it was just really, you know, and our son is, is going to a really wonderful school up here and he's blooming into whom he's, who he's supposed to be. And it's, you know, when you're, when you're raising children, you have all your hopes and dreams for them, right? Of course, that goes without saying, but they have all their hopes and dreams for themselves too. And we have to, as parents kind of, it's like this balance, right? Of like what our dreams are for them and who they are and who they're becoming and, um, letting go slowly and all this it's it's such a it's such a process <laughs> it's so like it really is it's such a process um but it's the it's the best process i wouldn't change it for the world i think being a mother is is amazing so and it's amazing when they're little and it gets better as they get older it's it's as it doesn't get easier as it gets old as they get older it just changes it becomes a different kind of uh, mothering Anyway, so let me share with you some books that I picked up that I've been reading, um, some knitting books. I got, I picked up um, Nora Gaughan's book, Twisted Stitches. Is that what it is? The Twisted Stitch Source Book. Also, this is a gorgeous, great book. Um, here's a really great sweater uh, that's in here. I, I've been wanting to really, you know, improve my uh, cable, cable and, uh, lace and that kind of stuff and cables of course nor gone um and I, what i'm gonna do after i i am planning to knit um i have some stuff that i have planned but i'm gonna spend some time doing swatches of small stitches you know of small stitch patterns to really strengthen um you know my ability to use yarn to create fabric and to think more like a, a fabric like think in terms of, of rather than looking at a pattern and being like oh I want that I want that garment I want to try to strengthen my ability to create stitches that will create a fabric that I can then translate into a garment myself into my own original garment that's my goal for this year my my knitting goals for this year uh, habits that I want to incorporate are a greater mastery over certain stitch patterns so that I can I can use them in uh, in my either in patterns that I'm cre you know that I'm that I'm following or patterns that I'm creating I would really love to do that so this book has been you know is has is a new purchase and a really really great um, I'm just gonna show you you know a little something here's here's one um, really beautiful uh, you know raised um, chevron pattern and then it shows the charts and how that is and that's just gorgeous I'll show you a few other things that are in here what I really loved um, you know I love like this kind of thing like a diamond pattern if you can see that you know really clearly but I love that I think that's just really beautiful and that would be like a really pretty accent on a sleeve or um, you know in in a in a yoke pattern something like that just really beautiful i would i just really i've never done this kind of stuff i've always been because i haven't had the time to be honest with you i haven't really had the time to devote to my knitting i've been knitting for 20 years but i haven't really just given myself permission to spend the time to work on it and i'm doing that now that we have moved and we have a different lifestyle and i have more time which i'm really i'm really blessed to do that um I know that. Here's some other beautiful, beautiful uh, patterns. So I got this one. This book is really something. And then of course, you know, Japanese, the Japanese knitting stitch book. This is just, I mean, I just, I, can't, I could just devour this book. Everything in here. I love, I love all the, um, the pretty, pretty, I love not only the twisted stitches, the lace stitches, but the color work is so gorgeous. I love um, the whimsical nature of Japanese stitch patterns. And it's like this combination of like classic with, um, you know, just something really that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lace. pretty lace that could be made with mohair I mean there's just so many possibilities um, 
so I'm really excited. This one is, this is kind of like a real, um, you know, mostly twisted stitches and cables. And then I got this, and you can see I got it on sale, got it discounted, I got used books. I love, get me a great used book. And look at that, isn't that adorable? I mean, I don't know that I would wear that, but I might knit that for somebody. Um, the mittens are so cute. I would totally wear those knitten, those mittens. I love that. And so, um, yeah. So look at these really sweet color works. I mean, this would make a lot of this stuff would just make you know great bag um, pattern for a sweater. I'm just really looking forward to. Uh, what I want to do is just get familiar familiar with these with these patterns, make swatches, and just allow my creative juices to kind of flow and see where it takes me, you know, see what I end up. Um, I mean, I love these birds. I don't know why. I just, I love that. I love these. I love something like that. I mean, I may want to make something else. Like I just... I want to get familiar with what I loved about the the Nora Gone book is that she has in the back, she has uh, graph paper that you can you know knitters graph paper so that you can you know make a design for a sweater for a hat, um, for a yoke you know for a hexagon for for so so this is kind of teaching the basics of design which I'm I feel like that's where I want to I kind of want to move into that at some point. And, um, you know, this is like when we think, isn't it interesting? Like everybody's always making um, New Year's resolutions at this time. And, um, and I think it is a great thing to think about. How can I improve my life? How can I, you know, how can I be a better person? How can I be, um, you know, happier, right? These are the things we think about. Um, but I'm moving more away from like goals and you know, my resolution, like I'm gonna, you know, rather than I'm gonna lose weight or, you know, whatever, I'm thinking more about habits that I wanna incorporate into my life that will, I hope, become part of my character so that I can have, you know, different qualities in my life. Um, I want to increase my creative capacity. I want to um, increase my ability to be kind to others. I want to, you know, all of these things and, and, you know, so there's like, so I want to cultivate spiritual self-care and I want to cultivate creative self-care and I see them as, as sort of connected. I mean, right. Don't you see that is sort of connected? Like if you're a creative person, you're taking care of yourself spiritually in a way because you're allowing, um, you're allowing that inner voice to kind of speak to you and to, to bring forth, right. And uh, to connect with the, I mean, the, we live in a creative world. We live in a creative universe. It's always, there's creativity happening all around us. We are such creative, we're all creative beings without, we're creating things whether we realize it or not. And, um, you know, to be consciously creative is a really, I think, a beautiful way to live your life. And, and so, you know, that's one of the things I want to do is just to kind of provide some skill and structure to my already creative nature and to, to so that I can be so I can gain more joy and more satisfaction from what I create um, the other thing of course has to do with my spiritual self-care and that's to cultivate my practice um, my practice is the is chanting the name you know the names of God it's a Hindu uh, practice but I'm not Hindu I but I, but I say, uh, I say, you know, prayers on a daily basis that it's a form of meditation. And through that practice, it, for me, it's a lot easier to just sing than it is to uh, sit down in silence, you know, in meditative silence. Um, but what happens, what I find happens, it's all about that inner voice. When you when you cultivate a practice, you start to be aware of the things that you're doing. You start to get an objective, reflective kind of like, oh, did I really say that just now? Or <laughs> where in the past you might, you might have just done it without realizing, 
you know, how your words have affected someone else or, um, you know, your darkness, your shadow comes up in ways you become aware of it. It's like, oh, do I really want to be doing that kind of behavior? Is that really what I want to be cultivating? Because again, just like we are always creating, right? We're always planting seeds for the future. Every behavior they say has a reaction, right? There's always a reaction for every behavior. So for me, what I would like to do is just um, be more mindful of my behaviors and what kind of seeds am I planting? Um, what kind of, you know, karma am I reaping? So yeah, so, so practice is, is definitely, this year it was, you know, I was able to, to deepen and to spend more time on my spiritual practice and I plan to continue that. I just don't think I'll ever stop doing that. I feel like the, the benefits have been so, so profound for me, so I won't stop that. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure I'll find ways to deepen it and to increase it, actually. So that's something I want to bring into my life for this year. Um, and I want to just be kinder to myself, you know, just to speak to myself in a more kind way, in a more um, less judgmental way, you know, just and by being aware of my thoughts, you know, and I can only do that through practice. I, I find that when I wasn't practicing, I wasn't even aware of what I was thinking. And now the space that practice opens up in your life and in your heart kind of allows you, it, it somehow shines a light into how we're thinking and what we're doing. So um, I would encourage you to practice, to find some kind of practice, whether it's yoga, whether it's meditation, whether it's following the breath, whether it's chanting, whether it's uh, walking meditation, whether it's writing meditation, you know, something that will allow you to have some space to um, not consciously reflect on your life, but when you stop thinking about, when you meditate, it allows your mind, you stop thinking about yourself so much and it actually like, it. there's a separation of this identification with me, right? You start to have an objective look on yourself, look at who you are in your life, and you start to see the things. You start to just see things, and not in a hor I mean, maybe it can be horrifying sometimes, but it's really kind of like, oh, I just, I did that. Or is that, that doesn't feel good, you know? In some way, all of a sudden, I notice how something feels. So just a thought about that. That's what I'm going to be hoping to bring in for the new year. And here is what I'm working on currently. Here's my, my whips. Here's my whip. I only have one whip. Um, it is the, you won't be able to see how it is right now. This It's a top down. I'm working on Anka Strix Big Love Cardigan. So here's the shawl collar. It's a da top down. I'm using... Um, here's how the sweater looks. I don't know if you'll be able to like really see. Um, so the shawl is like this. This is the back. And then here's the shoulders, which I'm gonna, you know, knit sleeves on. I did it using Plotilope. Uh, that's actually what the she uses, she calls for that yarn with her pattern. Um, it's really interesting to knit with this yarn really really interesting I do like it um, it is a very I purchased my yarn I've talked about this before I was going to purchase it at schoolhouse press I did get it from schoolhouse press I got this really beautiful um, I think it's called dark caramel I really love the rich brown of this it's hard to see in this light I don't know if you can see there's specks of red and there's specks of black and it's a very very I mean, if you smell it, it smells organic. <laughs> it smells um, of, you know, you know that this is a wool. It's not been, you know, treated. It has a very, the hair. So the, the thing about this yarn that's interesting and that everyone talks about, let me see if I can find a, a strand that that isn't being used. So the thing about this yarn is it's very easily you can rip it apart very easily. If I just go like this, I can just tear it apart. 
but you can also, because it has long fibers, right, there's long hairs in it, um, you can also kind of just work it back together very easily. So it will, it does split um, in the beginning, but if you just kind of work it a little bit, it's really easy to kind of have it come back together. So that was really an interesting thing. Um, and it knits up like this, I did it, this sweater is done single strand. So to me, it knits up like a worsted. I'm using a six, a size six needle on that. Um, so it knits up like, to me, like a worsted weight yarn. I wonder if I used a really finer point needle. I have to, I'm gonna experiment with it. Um, but it knits up and it's really lovely. And it's, it's I, you know, when I knit up the swatch, I, um, let me see if I can find my swatch. I put it, I saw, the, who does this? I think uh, the Gentle Knitter does this. She puts it in her clothes for a day just to allow it to be really close. You know, she puts it in her bra, I think, just to allow it to be right next to her skin to see how, her, how she reacts to it. Um, I find it to be very non-irritating. Someone else might, might find it to be uh, too scratchy. It has a rougher feel than say this kind of yarn, which is literally so soft. I mean, it's soft and um, this, it, it feels rustic. It has more of a rustic feel, but I like that. I'm okay with that, you know, I'm perfectly fine with that. And I love how this this pattern is a seed stitch pattern. I love how the seed stitch looks in this yarn. It just looks really kind of um, organic and, um, you know, I love the texture of it. I love the bigness of this pattern. Let me see if I can show you my picture of it. Um, I just love it. I think it's, it's, um, it's a really, it's, it's also, it's a journey for me because it's again, following instructions, um, in a new way. Here's what the sweater looks like. So it's really, um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to, you know, I really, I think this is going to be a useful functional piece to wear with jeans. I really think this is like a jeans sweater or, or maybe like a loose linen dress or something like that. Um, but from, you know, this is, this has been, like I said, I've been knitting for 20 years, but I'm not a big, I haven't been a big pattern knitter. So following a pattern, um, and doing lots, so there's tubular, uh, you know, so you have to do provisional cast on. Doing a provisional cast on in this yarn can be a little bit tricky, but she she gives you a link for, uh, uh, is it Judy's Magic Cast On? Just do, if you do this pattern, use that cast on. It is, will save you so much time and agony with the yarn breaking. And, and this is a very, very sticky yarn, which means it's great that if it falls off the needles, you don't have to worry about the stitches, you know, just sliding away. But it's, but putting threads through it, putting another yarn through it is going to, it's very, very sticky. So Judy's Magic Cast On was was a lifesaver. I loved it. So that that's a new that was a new skill for me. Uh, German short rows. I've done those before. Um, so, but not it wasn't completely new. But this is something that you know you're it's gonna you're gonna get really good at German short rows by the end of this of this pattern, which I'm I am also per picking patterns that are strengthening other skills. Um, so Judy, and then there's the tubular cast off, which I have never done. So that'll be an interesting, uh, I'm gonna be doing that. What else does it have? What other special? Um, uh, she just, you know, I really learned the seed stitch. I've never really worked in, in seed stitch. And this is, a, this is knit flat. So this is also the first sweater I'm making that's not in the round. And I, um, I kind of, I can see why people do this. It's, I wouldn't want to have to be doing a steak. You could probably do this in the round with a steak, but I'm just fine with it the way it is because it's not repetitive. Like I wouldn't want to do just stockinette stitch where I'm doing knit, 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 knit on one side, then purl, purl, but like it would just, I think it would become really repetitive, but because it's the seed stitch, it feels, um, it's an interesting knit, but it's also somewhat mindless towards the end. Um, you know, it's, I find it to be, a good satisfying pattern um there's one errata that i 
found when I went back to, I should have made note. So now I'm learning also the process when I, when I buy a pattern and I print it out, I'm going to find errata and write it on the pattern that I'm working on because I was struggling with, there was a point where I was like, what am I supposed to do? Oh my God. And I was just at a point in the pattern where I was really struggling. And then I went to the Ravelry page and I looked in my library and I could see they were right on the front page of the pattern. So I should have written that down. I should make note of that. Um, you know, but you learn there's, there's, there's so many skills involved in knitting, aren't there? There are so many skills involved. Um, the pattern, so I'm enjoying it. I can't wait. Hopefully that will be done. I'm hoping that it can be done before I go back to school in a couple of days. So I'm just at the bottom. I'm just at the point where I'm going to start doing the ribbing at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the sleeves and the sleeves shouldn't, I really don't think the sleeves will take long because they're dropped. They come all the way down to here where they start and then you're doing the sleeves from there. And then after that, I'm doing, um, Natasha Hornby's, um, Antha sweater, uh, not sweater. Um, and this is terrible because my printers, the color is off. So, um, but this is the, uh, this is the scar, this is the shawl. I just think it's gorgeous. It uses mosaic. I love, I've really been looking for something with a beautiful mosaic pattern. Um, so I'm going to be doing that and I'll show you the yarn that I'm going to be using with that. Just one second. So I'm doing it with Shetland um, Spindrift. I'm going to do the main color will be this red. And then I'm going to have the two accents to be this really pretty, it's called Old Gold. And then this really beautiful dark navy. I thought that would be a really nice contrast. Um, so here they are together. But the um, possibilities for this shawl are so many, and I had so much fun looking at the different um, color patterns that other people chose. Um, so really excited to dig into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna start that after I finish this, and um, after I finish Big Love, and then I'm going to um, get into my swatches. Um, so what else is going on? That's kind of my knitting story right now. Family is kind of, you know, I've just been spending, you know, time. We, we drove up into, um, into Burlington, which is about, uh, two hours from here, a pretty large city. It, it board, it's right on Lake Champlain and, you know, in Vermont it, coming from Long Island where you know you're surrounded by water right you so you really do the one thing i do miss is the ocean right i do miss that but lake champlain it has the feel of a really big body of water so it has that kind of energy and um you know and then it's kind of a college town uh so there was tons of shopping in that town like there was you know we went to bookstores we went to uh they didn't have a, i couldn't i didn't see a knitting store but my daughter and my daughter loves to thrift and so my son and daughter actually both love to so they we stopped we we stopped at a great um a great thrift stop, a thrift store on the way up and i got some i got a really great a really great it wasn't a hand knitted sweater but it was a wool sweater um, and I got, you know, some really cool, um, Sophie picked up some, you know, a shawl and some really beautiful tops that, you know, she just looks great and everything. So she can just, you know, it's a great age to be, it's great to be 18 going on 19 and uh, shopping at thrift stores is that's the time when you can do that. And I'm really like trying to, I actually enjoy it myself because, um, another thing that I want to bring into my life this year is, uh, or move more deeply into my life is, uh, I want to become less of a, uh, I want to be a more conscious consumer. And, um, you know, I really want to buy things that are, um, made in a certain way that are made sustainably where people are paid well. And, um, you know, this whole slow fashion movement. And I want to, you know, stop using stores that, um, 
you know, that kind of just feed this endless chain of buying and don't necessarily pay workers well and uh, maybe are making things in places in the world where there is little concern for the workers and for the area and um, for the environment that they're producing it in. So, and I think that thrifting is a great way to uh, really be mindful about what you consume and what you have in your closet. And, and so I have, uh, you know, there's a local thrift store that's a, con it's really a consignment shop. They take things in and then you get like, a, you know, if they sell your things, you get a credit. And so I've bought some really beautiful, um, you know, I've gotten some really beautiful pieces, some Eileen Fisher sweaters. I've gotten some really beautiful silk tops, really long wearing, uh, materials that are natural materials, linen dresses, things like that, things that I'm going to use and keep, you know, and just, so that's it. It's like, and I can see the difference and my daughter, you know, this is life, right? When you're young, you're so filled with like, you know, what you want, what you want. And so it just kind of translates into you want, you want to try clothes and you want to wear clothes. And of course you're, you're beautiful and you want, you know, you, your figure is great and you want to put those clothes on and it, it's a natural thing. Um, but as you, as I get older, I just feel like I want to, you know, have my clothes reflect my creativity and my, um, you know, my style in a more meaningful way. And so it's not about how much I have. It's about, I'd rather have a really beautiful, expensive item that comes from a company where they're focused on sustainability and natural materials and things like that um you know and as opposed to getting the latest most trendy item i don't know where at you know i don't know at the gap or something like that right not to put any any stores down um i mean i haven't shopped in those stores in a really long time but but it just, it feels better. And so now when I buy something, it's like, oh, my closet's getting really full, right? How do I, I, I almost want to pull something out to replace, to, you know, to, so it's like, I have this idea of like, I can only wear so many things. And when I really love what I'm wearing, which is part of why I love to knit, right? Because it's like you make an, a garment that you really love and you enjoy wearing. I'm sure you all feel like this. Um, you know, and that means so much more to me than, you know, I walked in just as an example, I walked into Banana Republic and Banana Republic had some really beautiful machine knitted, um, they looked like Icelandic sweaters. They were made with some kind of Icelandic wool, but, um, I don't know, like to me it was like, yeah, that's gorgeous, but it's not, ju I don't just want the look of the Icelandic sweater. I want to wear something that I made myself and that reflects my own skill level and my own ideas and my own the colors that I think will look good on me and um, or I want one of my children to wear something that I made for them you know and that it just has so much more meaning right and it just takes us again out of this unmind you know this mind less consuming into uh, you know what is this and is this something that I really want to have in my life and is this something I'm gonna to want to wear for a couple of years right I'm not gonna want this in my closet for just three months and then in the, you know the next season get rid of it and I don't want this constant rotation of clothes like well what do I do with my summer clothes and how do you know <laughs> what I want like I that's what I love about linen dresses now is that I can layer linen with wool and it, it is suddenly something I can wear all winter, right? With a pair of wool tights, a linen dress and a sweater and a cardigan over that, I can, that's something I can wear. Um, so I want things that are more season less or transcend the seasons and, um, you know, that I can just, that are more useful and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you might feel the same way, which is probably why you like to knit or craft. Um, so let me think, is there anything else um, of interest to share? Uh, I think that's kind of it. We're, um, we're just winding down. We're going to get ready. We'll have, you know, New Year's Eve together. We'll have a nice meal. We'll have, um, you know, on New Year's Day, I have a, a spiritual tradition of saying 108 Hanuman Chalices the whole day. So it takes me almost the whole day. 
Um, but I find that to be a really great way to bring in the new year to kind of have my connection to the divine really solidified for the beginning of the year. Um, I'm planning on doing some reading. This looks really great. The, I really am enjoying this inner revolution. I've been reading, I've been listening to as I knit to uh, the Ramayana and to the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, these two things and these two books and then I'm also teaching the pearl so I've been listening to that um, podcast that I've been listening to I mentioned Ethan Nickturn um, on the Be Here Now network he's really great and I, I always enjoy listening to Sam Harris's um, Making Sense podcast I think he's that's also really a good balanced kind of political social commentary so I listen to him, I, I'm a subscriber, but I listen, to, I don't listen to him, you know, every time he comes out, I listen to that periodically. Um, but I do, I recommend the Be Here Now Network. I think they have really good podcasts. I listen to, I'm also going to real read, read Real Love by Sharon Salzberg. Um, I can put these in the comments for anyone who might be interested. Um, so yeah, um, that's what I'm doing. I'd love to hear. Uh, what you are reading, what you're doing to mark the beginning of the year, what your what projects you're working on, what's fulfilling you creatively right now, um, what you're doing to kind of mark the the this linear time, which doesn't really make sense why we have the beginning of the year in the middle of the dead of winter, right? Um, it even makes more sense to have it at the solstice or something, you know, um, but. Linear time, linear time is not, doesn't feel real sometimes, right? It doesn't really feel real. And they say it isn't. Um, but whatever you're doing, I hope that you are uh, enjoying and connecting with yourself and your creative self and that you are making a more meaningful life for yourself and that you're spending time with people who mean something to you and whom you love. And um, I'm so grateful for our time together and I look forward until we can connect again. Have an amazing, happy new year.